chart. This is a chart of price and time. It's your basic chart. And when I ask the question, what do you see here um, in, this, in this chart, um, you basically see, see price over a time period. And um, if, if we were to just focus on this area over here, we're seeing the price move up. But in this area, we see the price move all the way down. In this area, we see the price move up. And then we see it move down. And we see it move up. And we move down. And we see it move up. Um, the vision of this chart, you know, or, or for me, looking at this chart, I don't see the trees through the forest. I just see a forest. I just see, for me, I just see a big blur. And I guess if you look at a, at a forest, you see mostly green, but um, you know, let's call the red the, the brown uh, tree trunks. But you see the greens of the trees and maybe the, the browns of the, uh, the trunks. It's just a big blur. I don't see anything in this chart. I don't see. I can't. I can't um, rely on this chart for telling me really anything at all. I um, I need more. I need more. So when I when I look at a chart, I, I start to add things. Now, when I add things, I don't want to make I want to make sure that I add just enough. I don't want to add too many, because if you add too many things to a chart, and envision envision a a, a chart that where you have a lot of different things on it, on it, a lot of different indicators. I'm assuming a lot of you people know about indicators. You're not, you know, brand, brand new to it. But a lot of different technical things on, on a chart. If you have too many things on a chart, if you go from a vision that you're seeing something to a vision that you're not seeing, that you go back to seeing, the, you know, not seeing the trees through the forest. And so I think it's best as a trader to start with the basics, this, and then go on to, all right, let's add something here. Let's add something uh, in another layer and see if we, can, if, we can, if we can start seeing the trees, the forest, and start seeing you know, what we see leads to what we get in the market movements. And again, no, there's no guarantees, but... That's the basis that I want you to um, to understand here. All right, so I'm going to add add a few things here, and you, you're going to notice here that the, the, uh, the, these aren't um, well, they're not they're, they're not too complicated um, in uh, looking at it. This is the same chart. Um, we're we're right in this area right here, and um, I've added a green line, and uh, I'm, I'm going to call that the uh, 200 hour moving average. It's a simple moving average. We're looking at an hourly chart here right now. By the way, that's a sterling versus U.S. dollar. And uh, this uh, green line represents a 200-hour moving average. And the blue line here represents the 100-hour um, moving average. And now these, allow, these, um, these moving averages allow me to uh, see things, I think, a little more clearer. They give me a picture as far as uh, bullish or bearish bias. If the price moves below, it's bearish. If the price moves above, it's bullish. Um, they give me an idea of, uh, you know, through the slope, maybe what the um, trend is. Um, here, here, this line's going sideways, so you know that tells, it doesn't have a trend. This is moving to the downside. This is moving sideways, so it doesn't have a trend, which is is consistent with the market moving up and down here. So the hundred hundred hour moving average is saying, I don't know which way we're going. I don't know which way we're going, right? And so, so when I look at this and I see the 100-hour moving average going sideways, what do I see? I see a market that's unsure. On the top side, I see a, um, uh, you know, I see a market here um, against the 200-hour moving average that came up and tested this uh, or testing this 200-hour moving average. Let's uh, let's assume that you know we don't you know that the market is up you know coming up near the 200-hour moving average here. And what else is up up here around the 200-hour moving average? And I can go back from Right to left, I can look at this high and it says uh, 152.86. And I can look at this high and it says 152.86. And I can look at the 200 hour moving average and say that's at 152.86. So what's consistent? What do I see in this chart? What do I, you know, what, what, can, what judgments can we make about this chart right here? And assuming that the market's uh, trading up here at the, um, you know, 82 or so level, um, is, you know, and is moving up, up, up here. So it's uh, uh, what we know at 
is a pretty big tree that we have to pay attention to. It is something that we have to pay attention to. It's a, it's a level that is of importance. <clears throat> and the judgment that I make uh, from what I see and what you can see, and this doesn't take, this isn't hard, okay? You, you see a high, you know, you, you have the moving average come in, come in automatically. You, uh, you, you, uh, you, you start off, uh, we're, we're start, you know, I just woke up and here's where the price is near the, near this 200 hour moving average. And I see that. And then I go back and I, and I just follow my eyes and I come back to this uh, high right here and I say, oh, that comes at the same level as this. And I come back over here and say, oh, that level comes at the same le level as well. So what I'm seeing here is um, is a resistance area, and it's just a you know simple visual of what the market is right now. Nothing more, nothing less. I don't want to complicate it. You complicate things, and you start to not see the trees of the forest. Your vision gets a little blurry. Imagine if you're golfing, and you try to complicate things with a lot of things in your golf swing. Are you going to hit that ball well? And the answer is no, you're not. Golfers will tell you, pro golfers will say, I have, you know, I'm thinking about one thing, or I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just thinking about putting a good swing on it. What does that mean? Well, in, you know, deep down in the root of their thing, it means, uh, you know, I, I see 152.86. It is, I want to put a good swing on this trade at 152.86. And either it's going to, um, if I if I put a good swing on that golf ball, either it's going to be a good swing, you know, because my mind is clear, I have this vision of what I'm going to do, to do how I do it, I have a routine, I have a repetition, I, have, I I'm, you know, it's a, it's a habit of mine to swing the golf club. Um, it should become a habit of yours to also see, as a trader, to see that 152.86 is, is a level, is where you want to put a good swing on it, right? We hear these cliches in golf, and we, you know it's the same thing, same thing in trading. So 152.86 is a key, key level. Now, um, uh, the uh, it's not it's not all complicated. Now, if we put a good swing on it here, we we have two choices here: one one to either buy the buy the buy the market or to sell the market. Now, has the market made it to the 86 level? And the answer is no. So if the market Market comes up to this area right here, and we find that it peaks up here around the 82 level, and also peaks up here around the 82 level, and starts to come down a little bit. Are you more inclined to be a buyer here, or perhaps a, a seller against this downward sloping line, this triple, this double top up here, this 200 bar moving average? No, there's there, there are two choices here for a, for a trade, you know, in this area right here. One is to be short against that level, or two to be nothing. To be nothing. Eh, maybe I take that back. It could be long because we're above the 100 bar moving average. But if you're long, you'd want to see the price move above the 86 level, wouldn't you? But we've we've seen the market come down here. We've seen the market come up to a higher level. We've seen the market come down. We've seen the market come to up to a a lower higher level, and we have a double top. And so there's a, there's a resistance up there. So I I would say that the biggest the thing that I'm seeing the most is more bearish as opposed to bullish. Okay, so let's just say that we, we you know, that, that we uh, sell the market up here. Where, what, what else do we see in this price? Well, we see the 100 bar moving average. And where do we have to um, uh, get below, if this market is going to go lower, what do we have to get below in order to push this market lower? The 100 bar moving average. We have to get back below this level, 152.63. And then below that level, we have to get below this trend line. This trend line has one, two, three different points along that trend line. And so our, what we see up here is a cell, and what we see here is where we're going, our vision of where we're going. 